Yo guys, what's going on? This is Yorkie Man here and welcome back to another episode of my Football Manager 2019. Dave here with Braga. In this episode, we've got a double header. We're going to take on Benfica in this league game. It's quite pivotal. We need to keep the wins going. And now that's not because I'm worried that Benfica will catch up to us. I'm worried that Porto will catch up to us. They just keep on winning. It is so tight between me and Porto. I am so happy that I have better goal difference. As I think it goes on goal difference. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure it goes on goal difference. And if it does go on goal difference, that'll stand us in good stead. Because we do at this moment in time have better goal difference than them. Uh, but we're taking on um, Benfica today and I'm quite excited because uh, Boyata's out, Alcancer's out, well he's doubtful but I, I don't think they'll play him, Divock's out and so is Zayic so I mean we have a pretty clean slate to play against them, they don't have some of their better players so maybe maybe we'll be strong enough to beat them but you never know, Benfica are a tough task anyway. Um, I don't think there's been any, there has been some business that we'll walk you through before we go and look at the schedule. But the second game will be the first leg in the Europa League next round. Obviously, a little bit of a spoiler there. We did beat Krasnodar, but we were expecting to. Uh, so, and we will be taking on Celta Vigo, which I don't mind. There were some real big teams in there. I think Celta Vigo are a good team. Um, I know in real life they're struggling, but I think they're a good team, uh, to be honest with you. But I think it's one we could actually win and get through. So progressing another round is always going to help us, especially on the financial spectrum. Uh, but let's see the business that's been done. So there's been nothing in, just players out. And the first one going out is Luis Santos. Now don't worry, it's just on a loan. He's gone to Boa Vista. They're having a pretty good time. I think, if I'm... Correct, Bielsa is the manager there. So go on, Bielsa. Uh, but I think he's the manager there. So we let Santos go out on loan. They said he was going to be a key player for the team. And as you can see, he's starting every game and he's performing well. Uh, my mindset was he will get more games there. At the age of 17, he will get more games there. And we do have cover in our squad. So it made sense for him to go there and improve there as a player. And hopefully he does improve really well as a player while he's there. But it seems like it's going well for him so far. And he's playing well. So that's good for us. Also, we sold Raul Silva. He kind of came to me and wanted to go. Now, he's not a player that I would have necessarily sold this season, but he came to me and said he wanted to go. At the age of 31, he was going to slowly start to get pushed out of the team anyway with the younger defenders that you've seen, Cardoso, Santos. There are good defenders there that probably would be taking his place. And he'd be getting less and less games, and he said he felt like he probably wasn't at the standard of the club anymore, which is strange. I've never seen that before. Uh, but he said he didn't feel like he was at the standard of the club anymore and that he wanted to move. And then Fluminese came in for him and I went you know what okay it's 2.8 million up front eventually rising to I think maybe 3.5 I'm not 100% sure it's not a bad deal for the 31 year old he's been a fantastic player for me he's been a really good player solid I don't think we'd have had such a great first season um realistically if we didn't have him 28 games 7.25 he was superb for me and he had a good season again last season and he's not had a bad season this season but as you can see progressively less games we do have better defenders in there now uh with the way that we're improving the squad especially in the defense and the youngsters coming through so since the last episode where we finally managed to get the game recorded and the sound working correctly, I think the sound is sorted now. In fact, I think it sounds a little bit better. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, Quintero got off to an absolute great start. Go back and watch the episode. If you haven't seen it, it's the transfer special. So there's loads of jazz going on in that if you're wondering on changes to the team. Uh, but since then, we played Chavez. We beat him 1-0. Ricardo Hall coming back into the squad after injury. Uh, Martimo, we drew. It, this was a really frustrating game now we've had a few frustrating games but this is top of the list a 1-1 against Martimo I mean we got lucky that I think Porto drew as well on the same day so we did get pretty lucky uh, Meredos getting his first goal though which is decent for the club uh, but definitely that's you know it's a game we should be winning Martimo are in the bottom two so that was frustrating we didn't play against Krasnodar and I was tempted to bring the second leg that was going to be the live come was tempted, uh, but we actually, we, we just destroyed them, like Andre Ivan, I'm scouting him, because I'm a big fan of him, I've had him like, years past, in previous FMs, I am a fan, so we're scouting him, but yeah, we just demolished them, 5-1, uh, Quintero, Luis Suarez, Donis with a double, and Marquez with one, 
Donis, superb signing. Marquez, superb signing. All new players to the Braga system, and they are flourishing. We didn't play against Tondela, and coming off that little headache that we had from playing Krasnodar, the team underperformed massively. Uh, Cotizi... He had an awful game, Rivaldo, man. He he had a god-awful game, and he gave away the chance. We were dominant, don't get me wrong. We should have put more away. Quintero was not on good form after the Krasnodar game. I think maybe I just played him a few too many games in a row. He's literally been nailed on in the team sheet. Uh, so... Maybe that was an issue, but we did manage to come back late on Suarez and Horta. And it is these these kind of games, isn't it, if you're going to win the league, that you get good performances in. So then Krasnodar in the second leg, and I'm kind of glad that we didn't do that one and we're doing the double header for this one because we absolutely destroyed them again. Donis, Christy, Paulinho and Marquez, like, ow. Um, yeah, ridiculous. We played very, very well. <sighs> I just think we had too much for them. They couldn't deal with our style of play and the way we played. We then went and played Boa Vista. Got to see Bielsa. Nice to meet him. Nice to meet him. Well, we probably met him a few times this season. Uh, but Paulinho uh, got the first goal. Then Fabio Martins just went on a tear, even after having a player sent off in the 65 minute. Ricardo, uh, our right back. And at that point, I was thinking, right, we're in trouble. We're only 2 1 up. But we managed to go through. We performed very well. Fabio Martins looked like the old Fabio Martins, which was really good. They just couldn't deal with him when he was running at them. They just really had no answer to him. So it was great to get that result. And kind of a little bit of a revenge because they knocked us out of the Taco de Portugal. But now it's Benfica away. And we're holding out hope. So now my mindset is that potentially we'll do... Ben well, there's no potential about this. We'll do Benfica and Celta Vigo today. Now, if we beat Celta Vigo pretty comfortably, I have no idea how that's going to go off. I have no idea how they stack against us. Um, if we beat them pretty comfortably, then I probably won't bring the second leg if there's no point. Uh, but in reality... The next episode after this will be the second leg, so there'll be like a quick fire double. For me, it allows me to record in like close succession as well, which is helpful. But let's get into picking the team for the Benfica game. Right, guys, so this is the team we're going to be going with. Uh, Paulinho up front, Quintero just behind him, Martins on the right, Donis on the left, Gakuri and Novias in midfield, De Silva and Walker Peters right and left, and then Viana's going to come in for where Silva was playing, and Cardoso is in the squad again. He's getting quite a bit of game time now, prepping him for the fact that he's going to be the future centre-back that's going to get most of the games. Uh, the bench is looking pretty healthy. It's good to see that there's players like Marquez, um, who and Christy, who are really integral players for the squad, and we don't have to play them today. They don't even need to be on the bench. We can fully rest them for the next game. So I'm hoping for a good result here against Benfica. But this is the squad they're going with, so it is massively weakened. I mean, they have great wing backs and uh, Comas, the uh, centre back as well. Luis is a good player. Gets some Fernandez. Like it's not a weak weak squad, but it's definitely way weaker than Divock, Pacwell, Concert players like that being in the team so maybe we stand the chance we're pretty strong for today's game as well to be fair right so the team talk is done key highlights is on and let's hope for a good result here against Benfica I mean this would be huge um, in my opinion there would only be t there's Sporting and Porto to play as well but there would be two games where I could see it slipping up um, and if we win one of them, then we would near enough be guaranteed top of the table. But we have to win this one first. It's not going to be easy. I think it's going to be really tough. As it's 1-0 to Benfica already. Wow. It's difficult when you're the, uh, you know, the away team. But uh, this is not the way we wanted to start. This is... Yeah... You know, I talked at the start of the game how I felt like we had quite a strong team for this game, but yeah, great. I mean, great start. They've been dominant. We may go two up front and kind of just go for it. I mean, you don't, we don't really have much to lose. Um, you know, I mean, would I rather a draw? I would rather a draw because we'd still be a point ahead of Porto. But they're going to create again here. João Felix, Jota, oh, Fabio Martins. Can he do anything? Come out. No, we can't meet there, but Donis will pick it up. Quintero. 
Fabio Martins. This is better. Martins. Paulinho it didn't quite fall to him. And are they going to... Right, okay, they're not going to attack. Thank God. Um, we don't seem to be creating much at all. And poor balls like that. Xiao Felix. <sighs> Leitner. You've been so solid for us all season. To make a mistake now? Oh, that's frustrating. I must admit, though, in recent games, we haven't been playing superbly. It has kind of felt like there's going to be a game where we get battered, where a team just undoes us, and this could be that game. But can we score just before halftime? Don S, was he offside? It's going to count. It's going to count. So we get a goal before half time. This is key. Donis has been great this season, I have to be honest. Nine goals. He's really come in and performed. Let's no, he wasn't offside. I mean he may have been offside from the header, but we need to bring this back. I'll take I'll take a draw. Defensively not playing well, and the last person you want to be making a mistake is Leitner. He's he's had such a good season for us. Uh let's do the team talk here. Let's uh expect to see much better. And let's see what happens in the second half. We may go two up front at some point. So as the second half kicks off, is there something in this game for us? Not when Jao Felix is getting free like that. Can't okay, walk up Piers. Oh god, that's awful off the post. He, he just gifted them the ball back. I think we're going to go two up front. I think the pressure of having that many people forward will be difficult for Benfica to deal with. Um, Quintero's not played well, actually. He's not played well in the last few games. It'll be Paulinho as the deep lying, as Suarez as the advance. Suarez has come through for us on several occasions. Martin's not having the world's greatest game. Paulinho, of course, he's been very isolated, though. Neither is Gakuri. So, let's bring Febas on. Let's go Novius and Febas, the two Spaniards. Let's see what they can do here. Come on, boys. Can we rescue? Do we go attacking? I don't want to go more direct. We're going to go attacking. They seem to be playing quite defensive. Let's get at them here. Let's get creative, lads. And there's nothing there for us. It's a shame. No highlights either. And is this going to be a red card? It is. Yeah. It's going to be a red card. And the game. The game pretty much is just thrown it away. Very, very frustrating moment. You can't afford for something like that to happen. Not in this kind of game against Benfica. Frustrating. It's going to be another big team live com loss. As they make it 3-1 here. Ah, this is so frustrating. Again, we've just not cracked playing against the bigger teams yet. We're just not quite there. We're, we're probably better than, you know, we're solidly the third or fourth best team. Without a doubt. Absolutely solidly. But then when it comes to Benfica and Porto, we just don't seem to have an answer for him. I mean, we had an answer for Porto early on in the season. It's been disallowed, though. That's decent news for us. Um, but apart from that, we've been pretty lackluster. I'll be honest, we've been pretty lackluster. And defensively, we've seemed to struggle the most against the bigger teams, which is a shame because we've been quite... Solid in the first two seasons. And then this season, defensively, we haven't been very good. Maybe it's the transition. Febas. Fabio Martins. Is there late drama? No. No, <laughs> no, there's not. Never mind. But yeah, again, I, I, you know, it's a case of not being able to beat the bigger teams. The last thing you need is your keeper making a mistake and costing you a goal. And, you know, the second to last thing you need is someone getting sent off. Uh, Novi is getting sent off. Someone who we've relied on so much has been very good for us. But um, a weaker Benfica, and we couldn't, we couldn't take advantage, um, and that's an issue because now Porto will be neck and neck. And I do feel like that, you know, there's a bottle job here. I wouldn't say it's a bottle job because we probably shouldn't win the league, but it still feels like when you're in front like this that we need to be performing better. 
So I'm going to tell the lads that I'm not happy with their performance out there. Because I'm not really happy with it. I think we can play better than that. But let's get to the Celta Vigo game. Right guys, so this is the team for the Celta Vigo game. We're going with Paulini up front. Christie behind him because Quintero obviously is not having great games at the minute. Martins and Donis. Uh, Gukuri and Novius. Uh, I'm playing Novius because he won't be able to play in the league game in between, so it just makes sense. Cortese is coming into the defence, but I'm going to swap him round there with Bruno. That's a mistake. Leitner in net, Walker Peters on the right, and Nuno on the left. It wouldn't have been Walker Peters on the right, but Ricardo is injured, which is a little bit of a shame, but he should be back for the second leg. So let's hope for a good game. Now, it's home, so we kind of need to get a good performance in this home one. Uh, Marquez is on the bench. I've noticed though he's wanted by Sporting. Now, Alejandro is having a very good season, he's improving, uh, and he seems to be doing very well. I mean, he's scored eight goals this season with seven assists. He, he's having a really good year. He's come in and been a little bit of a Fabio Martins replacement, and he's done the business that Fabio Martins just hasn't been able to do. So, Sporting want him, they would have to pay a great fee, because I am a big fan of him as well. Right, so they have a really strong team, don't they? I know Jensen's good. Money is, he's got to be getting on now. Hugo Mayo. Iago Aspas is still in the team, but Maxi Gomez is a good player. So is Emre Moore. It's, it's going to be difficult. I think they probably stack up better than us. They've probably got a better team than us, in my opinion. Let's hand over to the assistant and let's... Give faith to everybody and get into the game. So, let's tell them to get creative straight from the off and hopefully we can have a good performance. There's got to be one more come in this double whammy where we get a decent result. That Benfica game is still fresh in my mind. And really, it was frustrating. When they had a weaker team out, just everything that, you know, could go wrong did with the mistakes we made and the player being sent off, Fabio Martins. I can't find Christie and that's an issue. We need to find that pass. Uh, I think they're going to be dangerous going forward. They've got great players. Iago Aspas here. Defensive line's got back well. Aspas still gets the ball in though. And Maxi Gomez hits the post. Wow. That's not what you want early on. Novius here though with the free kick. And it's over. It's over. Let's get creative again. I find get creative is probably the best one to spur your team on. Uh, or at least that's how I've found it so far. Well, Napoli are losing. I would really like to go through it. It'd be nice to get through to, I believe it's the quarters after this. It'd be the furthest we've made in Europa League football. Vienna, Ryan Christie. You know, I'm contemplating selling him because he probably doesn't fit in the team next season. But he's he's not been bad. He's been a really good utility player. He's been paid a lot, but he's great to have in the squad for when you need to fill that position. You know, Quintero's not playing well. Donis is, and I wanted to keep Donis on the left. So, Ryan Christie just came in and fit into that position perfectly. It was a good start to this first leg and to this first half. Wow, Chelsea are beating Spurs 4-0. They've got Rodrigo, though, so, I mean, they're not doing bad. Yeah, Galatasaray are beating Napoli 2-1. They've probably got an aging squad, though, now of Napoli, unless they've made lots of changes. But the rest is all very quiet. Inter versus Roma, that should be a good game. Uh, Spartak Moscow winning 2-1 as well. Oh, wow, PSG losing. Rabic. I love this man. He's such a good player. I will sign him at some point on FM this year, but I just haven't been a team yet that's been able to, uh, to get the move. Let's hope for more of the same this second half. We really limited them to that one chance that hit the post for Maxi Gomez. Apart from that, we've been pretty decent. Um, and I'd like to continue that. Obviously, only one. Okay, now two shots on target. But um, I'd like another. You know, going into the second leg away, I'd like to be at least two up, potentially. I will just sit deep as possible in the next game if I have to. Nuno, get a good ball in here. Christie again. <sighs> Agonisingly close. That's a real shame. I was really hoping for, I mean, a double there from Christie. Just, that would have been fantastic. Let's bring Marquez on. He's known to get late goals. Um... <sighs> Let's bring Suarez on as well because Paulinho is not doing the business up front. Definitely not been as deadly this season, Paulinho, as few, you know, seasons past. He kind of played his way into contention. I was up for selling him after season one, but he played his way into contention last season. But he's 
He's been a little bit dull this year. Maybe we might look to get rid of him in the summer. But that could all change, you know. If he has a good run at the end of the season, there's no way I'm going to let him go. Uh, Blanco, Suarez picks that up, but he can't keep hold of it. Now Maxi Gomez is going to go through. Oh, great from Leitner. That's what we expect from him. That's what he's been doing all season. Apart from that, I think that's his first mistake for me, though. I think that is his first mistake for me. That um, that one there against Benfica. Um, no, let's bring Harter on. He can definitely influence games late on. He's been very good this year, but since his injury, Donis is playing that well. He's struggling to get back into the squad. Novius, Ricardo Harter. Kyle Walker Peters. Suarez. Oh, what ball from Walker Peters and Suarez gets his 10th goal of the season. Luis Suarez, fantastic. He's having a very good season. He's quite tall as well, though, that always helps. But uh, yeah, definitely right back and left back are, are must signings next season. I don't want to be loaning again. I think we should be in a position where we own our right and left back. Please, no, just blow up now, Ref. Just blow up now. This will be a very, very good win. In the grand scheme of this episode, this 2-0 victory here against Celta Vigo is very good. So we will do the second leg in the next episode, but um, I'm very happy with that. Luis Suarez again, he's coming clutch with a few late goals. Him and Marquez coming in as substitutes. Well done, lads. That's a good win for us. Continue. And that will be it. So the next game, well, there'll only be one game in between. So the next episode may be a little bit shorter. But I will probably bring the uh, draw because I, I haven't done that enough in this series. But if we do get through, I'll probably bring the draw for the next round. I know I said that as if, like, I'd already planned that we were going through. But that's a very good start. 2-0 against Celta Vigo. But we have done well in Europe all round this season. Um, but hopefully form can continue in the league. That Benfica game is just a blip. And hopefully Porto drops some points maybe to Benfica. And everything should be okay. But anyway, guys, if you're new around here, smash that subscribe button. And uh, please hit the like button. Every time you hit the like button, it helps me, this little YouTuber in that YouTube algorithm, especially in the world of FM. Uh, thanks a lot, guys. And I will see you in the next one.